Welcome to Development with Mark Monster, Episode 2, Running an Azure Function Locally. I am Mark Monster and today I want to help you run an Azure Function locally in Visual Studio. Before we go to Visual Studio, we will need to install all the necessary tools. This excellent Visual Studio blog article explains what you need to get Visual Studio tools for Azure Functions running locally. First, you need to install Visual Studio 2015 with update 3 and you need of course the Azure.NET SDK installed as well. If you have all those prerequisites installed, you can install the Visual Studio tools for Azure Functions. So, back to Visual Studio. I already have an empty solution, so we can add a new project. So we choose a new project and we go to the cloud templates and here you see Azure Functions and we choose our development with Mark Monster that Azure Functions this will be our product project name and inside this project we will be able to add multiple Azure functions. As you can see the template is pretty slim. Only an app settings adjacent is here, which is still empty. There are no values in there, we will come to that in a later session. We have a host of JSON which is empty and a project readme. We can choose by right clicking on the project to add a new Azure function. And what you see here is similar to what we saw in the Azure portal previously. Um, we can choose for a different language, we will choose for C Sharp and we will create an HTTP trigger. I call this Web Trigger, just give it a meaningful name and now just do a create. We see there are multiple files created in a web trigger folder. It's the function.json file, which describes the type of function. It's an HTTP trigger, and that we expect a request in the in binding, input binding, and an output binding response. The project of JSON is still empty, it only references the .NET 4.6 framework. And then we have the run.c sharp script file. It's similar as what we saw in the portal. It's a public static async run method, which gets an HTTP request message as input and an HTTP response message as output. And it's indeed the same as we saw in the portal. There's some logging, it's trying to get the name parameter, and based on the name parameter, if it's there, it will say a hello plus name, if it's not there, it will say a bad response with a message that it should be passed into the query string or the request body. We now have the option to just start it locally. So I will hit the start button and we will see the experience that you will get. What you see here is the Azure Functions command line interface which is starting. It's acting as a host 
for all the Azure Functions in this Azure Functions project. And here you can see it is listening on HTTP localhost 7071. It's reading the hosted JSON file. And at this moment you see it found the HTTP function web trigger and it is available at this address. I am copying this URL and see if we can actually use this. So I will skip to Postman and I will make it a little bit smaller so we can run it side by side. I will paste in the URL in Postman and I'm not adding the parameter name yet. So I'm sending this and as you can see I'm getting a status 400 bad request explaining me that I should pass a name to the query string. If you look to the Azure Functions console you see that the logging has been outputted here to the console. And if we try again with adding the name parameter you will see that it's coming in and it will return as a HTTP status 200 thank you for watching this episode of development with mark monster if you like this episode please let me know by pressing the thumbs up thanks